Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to this week's episode of Fantasy Warfare Tournament. We are on the road to WrestleMania, and we are continuing with more WrestleMania-themed uh, Fantasy Warfare Tournaments. And I want to thank you for being part of this, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or listening to us later on on Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else you get your podcasts from. We are part of the Ontario Independent Wrestling Podcasting Network and the Johnners Podcasting Network over in the UK. This week we are looking at some of the major attractions that were not title matches. Uh, just wanted to throw something out differently than going after the greatest world title match and stuff like that, because there were all those, all those different special attractions that were almost show stealers to a certain extent. And we came up with 32 of them. And so this is part one. Next week we'll do part two. And you're going to see certain things like HBK against uh, Kurt Angle. You're going to see things like the Boneyard match. Uh, even Undertaker against uh, CM Punk. Some of the matches that were not uh, championships, as I said. So to do our regular panel, we need to bring them in. And Stephen in Toronto, how are you? Great. It's super nice here today. So. Yeah, an amazing week uh, being built with uh, weather and could be rid of all these snow piles. <laughs> I haven't had snow here in Toronto for weeks. Well, at least a week, so. Must be nice. I still got snow here in London. You can keep and, it. Yeah, no, I want to get rid of it. Jonesy is in Niagara Falls, and how are you, Jonesy? Uh, only have piles, no snow. Nice. I uh, obviously did not get the memo today that we were wearing blue shirts. I, it's Blue Shirt Day. I totally missed out on that, but we are uh, doing this tournament. Uh, special attractions of WrestleMania. Some of them really didn't have anything. Uh, I looked at WrestleMania 8. It was kind of boring. Uh, your special attraction was actually the main event with Hogan and uh, Sid, so I kind of took some of those out because uh, they stood uh, separately. But we're going to show uh, this week's uh, video, and Stephen can break down the 16 matches we're uh, going to look at today. Piper and Goldberg in the back, back Goldberg. Piper and Goldust for Met WrestleMania 12 at the back lock brawl for HBK Kova Jericho from 19. Uh, Lashley versus Umaga from 23. That was hair versus hair for uh, Trump versus McMahon. Versus Rock versus Hogan at 18. The Boneyard match from WrestleMania 36 versus the Mixed Tag from WrestleMania 6. Christian versus some douchebag from WrestleMania 20 versus Angle and HBK from 21. 
Uh, Andre the Giant and Big John Stud from WrestleMania 1 versus Edge and Mick Foley at 22. Mixed tag from third, uh, WrestleMania 34 versus Owen and Brett at 10. Savage and Warrior from WrestleMania 7 versus Douchebag and Styles from WrestleMania 32. Uh, Mr. T and Piper from 2 versus Tane, uh, Kane and Taker from 14. Uh, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins from 36 versus Piper and Adrian Adonis. Those ones are actually uh, for the next week. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there We're we going are. as far as T and Piper against uh, Taker and uh, Kane. He just oh, wants okay. to say douchebag more. Well, you'll be able to tell how this is going to be a quick one. Yeah, it's going to be relatively quick. Uh, we do have the other ones that you're, uh, we're about to uh, reveal for next week. Uh, you can maybe tell that list at the end of the show. Um, yeah, it's basically looking at some of the uh, greatest matches, as I said, that were not for a title or uh, closing out a show. And you're going to notice a, a little bit of a theme with some of them because you got some repeat uh, customers uh, coming up. But they're going to also uh, see them in the uh, last uh, one that we're doing just before WrestleMania with the greatest, well, Mr. Our Mr. WrestleMania. And so you're going to see guys like YPJ, Kurt Angle, HBK, Taker, all in these because they've had such great matches. I'm getting an echo from somebody. I don't know who, but I am. Uh, but... Guys, your thoughts before we uh, dive into uh, this? Uh, I'd say most of these matches belong, but one person doesn't. Understandable because of your feelings about uh, Mr. Jericho. And uh, Chris? If we could be enlightened on, on that, um, uh, just so we know what, what it is. Um, a lot of these matches... Uh, are pretty good ones. Uh, there's some that I thought would be easy until I actually watched the match. There's a few here that I never actually watched the matches. So, okay, yeah. So, uh, it's interesting how some of them are. Uh, you wouldn't expect them to be show stealers, and then some of them were. Uh, but let's dive into the first one, and then that is. Piper and Goldust at WrestleMania 12 taking on HBK and Y2J at uh, 19. Now, Piper and Goldust, this was not supposed to happen originally. You had Goldust going against uh, Razor Ramon, but Scott Hall didn't want anything to do with uh, Goldust. Uh, the whole homophobic uh, stuff was going on. And you got Piper, who was the uh, president of WWE at the time, and he was making uh, comments and references about OJ Simpson. And there was talk, uh, if you listen to uh, something to wrestle with, that they were trying to get OJ in there and just beat the piss out of OJ and give retribution, I guess, to the fans. But then some uh, backlash came to them. They weren't going to get sponsors. Then they got thinking about the whole families that were involved with OJ's uh, alleged murders that he got off on. And they pushed the brakes and said, no, OJ, we're not going to do this now. And so this is what came of it. It was Goldust and uh, Piper. And then they figured out, let's do something uh, spectacular because they're both, one's an actor and one thinks he's an actor and the whole Oscar thing. They went to a backlot brawl. Kanicki from Greece, uh, Jeff Conway was uh, making a cameo there. Uh, they had a hose there just in case. Uh, it was raining in Anaheim because they recorded this a week before uh, WrestleMania, and then they spliced it all together. The OJ Bronco chase, they got that footage permission put in there, and then they made it to the arena, and Piper had broke his hand the week before in the pre-filming, so that's why he was wrapping his hand in tape to, and getting into the arena, and they stripped gold dust down, and he was wearing lingerie, and Piper stood tall. Afterwards... Piper was no longer the president. Gorilla Monsoon came back. That match expanded the whole show in a way from uh, having a couple segments. Then you have YTJ and HBK, 
And we talked about this on the last episode. And a really spectacular match between the two. Great, uh, evenly matched up guys. And it was based on jealousy. And you're going to hear this a lot when you hear any of these Y2J matches are based on jealousy. And you look at the uh, two, and for myself, I'm actually going to pick HBK and Y2J as much as I am a Piper and Goldust fan, just because of the way that match was, as opposed to being hokey with the uh, gold uh, Cadillac and the OJ uh, footage. Steven? Oh, it's the bat lot, back lot for all. Even if uh, pain in the ass stupid wasn't in it, I'd still go the back lot for all. So I'm going the back lot for all. Jonesy? Uh, you know what? The HBK Y2J match is a really good match, but it did not have the same hatred that Piper versus Goldust did. The way that it was executed uh, was very good. A great spot with the gold vehicle dragging a garbage bin with Piper on top of the vehicle. There was a good chance of people getting maimed there. Um, and when they arrived, they, they, they really reminded me the two cars coming in like a Keystone Cops movie of, of people arriving and um, just the facial expressions that Piper has. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the ending of it. Uh, not because of the, you know, that he was dressed in, in SNM and that it's just more, it was like that, that was going out of the realm of wrestling too much for me in that match. I think him doing the grabbing of the ass and kissing him was all they needed. They didn't actually need the visual of him being dressed up weird, but I give it to Viper and gold dust. Yeah, I guess at that time there was even talk about Goldust getting implants. Uh, I also heard that Piper wanted the uh, Bronco, and Vince gave it to him as a gift. So Piper somehow ended up with it, and looks like Piper and Goldust are moving on. It's match number two, the Battle of Billionaires taking on Icon versus Icon. So I was there for Lashley Omaga at 32, or 23, sorry, at Ford Field. Then you have Rock Hogan. It's Rock Hogan. It's Rock Hogan. Jones All right. Uh, the Lashley Umanga match, uh, it had too many damn entrances in it for one. Uh, by the time they got through all the entrances, it was just like, please get this over with. The match itself is fantastic. Um, these two guys really put it all out there. Um, now, the guy that was with Umanga, I can't remember who the hell that was. Armando Estrada? Yeah, at first I thought it was Slickster, and he gained about 50 pounds. Uh, he, he was dressed up like the Slickster. Um, the money dumped and Trump did, I think that was to make people happy because of all the damn entrances. Uh, but you got... You got some extra added stuff in this match with Shane uh, going in there and doing some stuff. And, of course, Austin, he he didn't just throw one punch or one uh, stunner. He did a lot more than that. The Rock versus Hogan one, I mean, what more can you say? Uh, that one is just real good. But as far as spectacular, Lashley and Umanga for me. Oh, really? Okay. So I guess I get to break the tie on this one. Uh, yeah, you got everything with uh, Umaga and uh, Lashley. Uh, they teased that we were going to see what was going to be underneath Donald's dome, if that was real hair or not. Uh, he threw a really bad clothesline and almost a Luthez press attempt. Uh, but C. McMahon getting his head shaved and the beer bash and everything with that. And, of course, Rock and Hogan, just the crowd in itself makes that match uh, huge. Uh, if you take out the volume, you take out the commentary, it might not be as great of a match, but I think all the elements that were in there, I was at both these uh, events uh, for this. And, um, yeah, I have to go with uh, Rock Hogan. Uh, just too 
much uh, emotion put in there between the fans and being able to switch on the fly from being Hogan going in as the heel and Rock as the face, and they switched uh, right off the bat and Rock played the chicken shit heel. So uh, Hogan Rock are advancing, and that brings us to match number three, Boneyard match versus the uh, mixed tag with Savage and Dusty. All right, so there's a lot that goes on in both of these matches. So I'm going to keep some of it short, uh, but some of it's going to be long. Uh, the first match, of course, it had the movie feel to it. Uh, it reminded me of the movie Monsters Brawl. Uh, if you've never seen it, see it. Uh, it was well produced. Um, are we going through the details of the match? Uh, just highlights. All right. Well, the highlights, of course, is AJ, um, uh, his entrance was he was in the uh, coffin, showing that he isn't afraid of the Undertaker, calls the Undertaker, he can hear him in the background, motorcycle comes in. Um, the match itself, it's not, to me, it's not really a match. Um, I'm going to actually pay more attention to the other one because the Boneyard match was well done, but in the same, it to me, it's not a match. It's it's not even part of the event. It was like a tag on at the end. Um, so for me, it doesn't even qualify in my brain for, for being in this. Uh, I got to go with the mixed tag uh, because personally, I think this was uh, is more entertaining than watch. And I would show this match before I'd show the Boneyard match to someone that is like, this is what wrestling is. The, the mixed tag match is, was so well done. Um, a little bit of wrestling in there, but it was mostly shenanigans. Uh, the crowd was into it. Uh, Sapphire is just hilarious. Uh, ain't no king and queen no more. Uh, the smack talking going on in this. And for me, this match was bigger than it actually was. Uh, there was hate between... You could feel it was almost real, the hate between the two. Uh, there was a lot of color in that ring uh, as far as not the, not, not the color of the people, of course, but the color of the whole, the polka dots, what Macho was wearing, the entrances, um, the dancing, like everything was in there of entertainment wrestling. So that's why I'm given that match because it should have been a stinker, but it, but it's not. Yeah, it was a uh, really good match uh, between the two. I'm a huge fan of, obviously, Savage. Uh, it's not a uh, secret here. Uh, Elizabeth's entrance, people just rose to their feet for it. Uh, like she had such a special appeal uh, to the fans, being the first lady of wrestling. Uh, they did what they could with uh, Sapphire being in there. But then the Boneyard match, yeah, it's not technically a wrestling match. It was a brawl, but we've seen uh, those in arenas as well. They made the best they could with the circumstances that they were presented last year with COVID and shutting everything down. And I can only imagine what they would have done if AJ and uh, Taker could have been in their arena to do it. But when they uh, were presented this opportunity to – do a cinematic uh, style match. One of the first ones ever. Uh, this was a really great match. Uh, presentation, if you will. Um, if you will. I go, I know. I'm going with uh, Boneyard match. So, Steven, you get to uh, break the tie. Oh, it's Boneyard for me. I would much rather watch the Boneyard. So, that's a... Uh, two one victory. That's happening a lot in this uh, tournament, which is okay. Uh, our fourth matchup is Christian and Jericho taking on Angle and HBK. Uh, Christian and Jericho, they were a tag team. Uh, there was the whole bet of who could uh, hook up with uh, Trish Stratus, and she was sort of in the middle here, and they ended up uh, going against each other. Uh, when they broke up their tag team. Shocking, considering what we saw later on in years, which is not in this list, I believe it's Jericho and Owens. 
Uh, but well, like I said, it's jealousy uh, that always gets the better of Jericho and sets up his WrestleMania matches, it seems. And in the end, it was Trish Stratus who turned on Y2J. Uh, Jericho was actually the fan favorite in this one, and yeah, Christian was the heel. And you saw Christian and Trish Stratus making out at the end, and Jericho just stunned. And now we can actually redo that 17 years later, minus Trish Stratus, because Jericho and uh, Christian are in the same uh, organization. So I don't doubt they'll hold off on doing that one. And then the other uh, side of things, you got Angle and HBK. This was a battle of one offsmanship, uh, jealousy in a way, uh, just tip for tat, costing each other uh, matches, titles, uh, Royal Rumbles, and all this other stuff. A really great match that Angle as the heel won in the middle of the ring, HBK uh, just struggled to get the uh, kick out a bunch of times, and then he got great bind, and he couldn't uh, do it. Finally tapped out. One of uh, Sean's 11 losses that we talked about last year, I and mean, last week, should I say, uh, if you go to the Angle podcast that he does with uh, Conrad, they actually talk about this match. So for me... I'm going to go with Angle and HBK. Steven? Oh, Angle and HBK. And Jonesy. Um, I must have made a mistake. I don't even have that match on my list. So my vote don't count on that one either way. So, Well, hearing the uh, way things are, which one would you pick? Probably the angle one, uh, the Christian one, Jericho one. Uh, it was good, but yet it was boring all in the same. I found our, myself kind of napping through some of it. Our first uh, sweep in that one, 3 nothing, And that takes us to match number five. Andre the Giant, Big John Stud, Foley, and Edge. Steven. Well... Andre and Stud from one versus Edge and Foley from 22. It's easy. For me, it's Edge and Foley from 22. Uh, I got to go with Andre versus Stud. I just watched the match today. I thought it was going to be a piece of crap. It's short. It's sweet. Um, I think it's probably the only good match that Andre actually had at WrestleMania. Yes, he had the big one at three, but he was not in in any type of shape to be out there. Um, this one was great because they had a guy, Bing Judd Stud, who was almost as tall as Andre. And um, I, I, th I think the match still stands up today as far as what two big men can do in the ring in a short period of time. Okay, so I guess I get to break the tie on this one. Um, for me, Andre and uh, Stud were as kind of slow and methodical. Uh, sometimes big men versus big men don't work. And when Andre didn't really like Stud uh, to begin with because he always uh, wanted to be the big guy and Stud was trying to be a giant as well. So they really didn't meld too good. And that was real cash at the end that – yeah. Andre was throwing out that Bobby had to quickly grab the bag and stop because he knew Vince was going to be pissed off uh, losing that money because Andre wasn't supposed to throw the money out to the fans uh, on that one. And then you got uh, Foley and Edge, and this was a hardcore match between the two, and the big moment was the table being put on fire by uh, Lita and Edge going through it and uh, spearing... Foley, and all you see is the shock on Edge's face because of the burning, and he truly was needing medical attention after that, and just everything they put themselves through uh, to get through that match was amazing. Uh, for me, it's going to be Foley and Edge. 
And uh, so that's a 2-1 victory on that one. And that brings us to our next matchup, which is Mixed Tag at, at 34, taking on Owen and Brett. Jonesy. All right. Okay, I got the right one then on this. <laughs> so uh, this is one where Braun um, Strowman picks a child to be his tag team partner. No, it's uh, not. No, it's not? This is Angle and uh, Ronda Rousey against uh, Triple H and Stephanie. All right. I don't know how I got all the wrong matches. Um you guys can be the tiebreaker because I, 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 I need a new list. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. Here, so come back to me at the end on that one because I have no idea what matches yeah, I'm so even talking about. We got uh, Angle and uh, Ronda Rousey taking on uh, uh, Triple H and Stephanie. In this case, they uh, ended up, uh, I think it was the year before, Ronda uh, did an arm drag to uh, Triple H when The Rock was there. So this time, uh, Angle's back uh, wrestling, and they went against each other. And I believe, uh, yeah, Ronda Rosie ended up getting the victory by uh, basically uh, putting Stephanie in the arm lock, and uh, she uh, tapped out. And then you got... Of course, Owen and Brett. That was the uh, opening match to WrestleMania 10. They uh, stole the show right off the bat and set the bar high for uh, what to expect uh, the rest of the night. And people had to follow that. Of course, HBK and uh, Razor were able to. But with Owen and Brett, this had started back at the Survivor Series uh, when Owen felt uh, slighted by the family. He finally turned on his brother at Royal Rumble uh, in the tag team match. And finally, Brett gave in and said they were going to have their uh, match. That Brett had ended up winning, uh, tying the Royal Rumble with uh, Luger, lost the coin flip, and uh, as a result, he had to do the first match with Owen and the last match with whoever came out of Yoko and Lex Luger. And we know it was uh, Yoko that uh, did that, but Owen took Brett to the limit, and even beat Brett in the uh, first matchup. For myself, it's going to be Owen and Brett. Steven? Oh, it's Owen and Brett. And Jonesy. Oh, yeah. Owen and Brett. And so another uh, clean sweep. 3 nothing on that one. Uh, just see. Like, Second, I'm trying to figure that uh, one. Anyways, uh, our seventh match of this uh, bracket is Savage and Warrior from WrestleMania 7 taking on Jericho and Styles. Uh, once again, Jericho and Styles all set up due to a bout of jealousy. They thought they were going to be a tag team together, and uh, then Jericho got too jealous of uh, AJ Styles being... Uh, cheered over by the fans, and he uh, finally turned on Styles, and they uh, went against each other in a really good athletic uh, competition, just like uh, he had with uh, HBK. A lot of people compared uh, Styles to HBK, and it would be an amazing match if they had ever uh, faced each other. Uh, Jericho ends up uh, losing to uh, AJ Styles in this uh, match, and the other side is Warrior and Savage. They uh, battled uh, against each other a lot. Savage wanted the uh, world title, and Warrior kept on denying him, even denying Sherry at the uh, Royal Rumble. And because Warrior said no again, Savage ended up cracking Warrior hard way in the skull with the scepter. Uh, fans rejoiced uh, who were not fans of Warrior, and uh, including uh, the talent backstage who saw the glass in uh, Warrior's head being uh, pulled out because they were just happy that somebody did something to Warrior. But this had uh, Slaughter and Slaughter take the title away from Warrior, setting up Hogan and Slaughter, 
and Savage against uh, Warrior. Warrior came out slow, methodical walking, wasn't doing the whole burn himself out. Savage and Warrior put their careers on the line. Warrior's tights on the back said it means much more than this, and it was the world title. Sherry was at ringside interfering. Warrior uh, doubted himself and started leaving, talking to his hands. Savage attacked him, and also at the beginning, Keenan had noticed that Elizabeth was at in the crowd as well and thought she was there to rub it all in to uh, the whole uh, fact that he's going to end up uh, losing. So they go back and forth. Warrior finally figures out what he wants out of uh, this whole thing and wants to stay. Starts beating uh, Savage down, shoulder blocks all over the place, finally puts his foot on him and gets the victory and leaves. It wasn't the whole uh, thing with any big victory. And then Sherry uh, lost it, went after uh, Savage, calling him a loser and smacking him around, kicking him, and Elizabeth had enough, came to the rescue, got rid of Sherry, and we got the big reunion between uh, Savage and uh, Elizabeth, and people end up crying. He goes to on to be com commentary, and we have the wedding at SummerSlam. Just a huge moment on that one, and I obviously am going to go with Savage and Warrior. Uh, it's Savage and Warrior. And I agree. That's uh, Savage and Warrior for me as well. Uh, this is one of my favorite matches to watch. Uh, I never get tired of watching it. Any match after this on that card just seemed like a fart. Um, it's just a really good match. And it actually... Like, I think Warrior should have got a big pat on the back because he, th that match, you wouldn't know that he kind of sucked. Yeah, so it's a uh, 3 nothing victory with Warrior over Savage. And I'm just fixing this one here. So well, I got Mr. T and Piper yep. from two versus Taker and Kane at 14. It's easy. It's it's Mr. T and Piper. They were the first attraction match. It's, it's T and Piper. It's a decent match. Um, I watched it today. To me, it's still boring as hell. Um, Piper does a great job in it. So does Mr. T. But it's a boxing match. Uh, to me, I would have gone to the stands and got myself a drink. I'd much rather watch Taker and Kane uh, match um, than that one. So it's a tiebreaker. And I am going to go with uh, Kane and Taker because this was uh, the huge storyline that started before uh, the original Hell in a Cell where uh, Bear said that your brother's alive and all of a sudden, King comes out at uh, the first oh. cell. Just finally, Taker, like uh, Brett in a way, finally gives in and goes to after him. Three tombstones just to take out uh, his little brother. And yeah, I got to go with that one over the kind of boring uh, boxing match. So, Stephen, want to recap our first round? Yeah, so we had Piper and Goldust beat uh, HBK 2-1. Uh, Rock and Hogan beat Lashley Umaga 2-1. Boneyard beat the Mixed Tag from WrestleMania 6 2-1. Angle HBK beat Christian from 20. Uh, Edge and Foley from 22 beat Andre and Stud from 1 2-1. Owen and Brett beat the mixed tag from 34, 3 0. Savage and Moyer from 7 beat Styles from 32. And Mr. T and Piper lost to Taker and Kane 2 1. Setting up our uh, second round of uh, Piper and Gold Dust from 12 versus Rock Hogan from 18. Boneyard from 36 versus Angle and HBK from 21. 
Edge and Foley from 22 versus Owen and Brett from 10. Uh, Savage and Moyer uh, from 7 taking on Taker and Kane from 14. Yeah, so uh, some interesting matches as we get uh, deeper into these and a lot of, uh, as I said before, show stealers uh, that are coming up in this. So we move on to uh, the first one. I'm a little bit behind on our uh, graphics today because we're going through these so quickly. Uh, so we got Piper and uh, Goldust against Rock Hogan. And who's Chris this one? I mean, oh, okay, so it's me. Uh, to me, this one's a little easier now. Um, the Piper Gold Dust one I thought was really good. I liked it, blah, 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 blah. But the Rock and Hogan one, I felt it all the way up to the fifth uh, level at the Dome. So for me, this this match, it was kind of a surprising match because I don't think people expected it to be as good as it was. Um, it was just one of those things that everything fit together great and everyone had a great time. So, Rock and Hogan. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm going with uh, definitely Rock and Hogan on this one. Uh, just so much uh, emotion, as I said beforehand. Uh, probably a uh, better match was uh, Piper Gold Dust because of it being the brawl that it was and just the uh, how it played out. But being there 18 rows off the floor at the Sky Dome for that one, you can't deny it. It's got to be Rock Hogan, Icon versus Icon. Steven? Oh, yeah, it's Rock Hogan. Okay, so our next one is Boneyard Match versus HBK and angle uh two totally different styles because you get uh athleticism with uh, angle and hbk uh and a great story told with their bodies the other one was a lot of special effects and extra cuts uh you can go to the wd network and watch the behind the scenes to it because it took a lot of hours to Splice that together and where they found the property in Florida. Great to uh, look back on both of them, but I'm going to go with Angle and HBK. Steven? Oh, it's Angle HBK. As much as I like the Boneyard match, it can't compete with Angle HBK. And Jonesy? Uh, yeah, I'd have to go with Angle, Angle versus Michaels. Um, I didn't hate the Boneyard match. I thought it was well done. Um, but to me, it was a side note in, in WrestleMania. Okay, so clean sweep there. And we're going to go to Owen and Brett against uh, Foley and uh, Edge. Oh, for me, it's, it's Brett Owen. Uh, it's the classic match, so it's Owen and Brett for me. I have to agree on that. The Owen and Brett match, again, it's one of those matches that the biggest thing I took out of that match is it's what, to me, the Shawn Michaels-Bret Hart match could have been like at WrestleMania 12 if they would have shortened it. Because this match was perfect amount of time they did a lot of wrestling in this um it's just a really good match to watch the only thing that that, that i didn't get out of this is the the hate to me was only really brought by owen where brett didn't hate his brother so and brett really doesn't do a lot of once he's wrestling he's not really selling his character uh, as far as storyline i should say he's only wrestling so that's the only mark that i don't like in that match is the edge and foley match um now that i remember it uh had showed more hate and in, in furthered on with the storyline yeah so for me it's definitely uh owen and brett 
just a classic uh, match on that one. Uh, so clean sweep, Owen and Brett over Foley and Edge. Put that in there. And we got Savage and Warrior versus Taker and Kane. Savage and Taker and Kane, huh? Oh. And that there's not even it's Savage and Warrior. <laughs> uh, the other match is probably one of their better matches, but for the most part, Kane, Kane against Taker, it's a not as exciting as seeing two faster guys go at it. Yeah, uh, for me, I love both matches, but with the everything that happened with Savage and Warrior and career versus career on the line, the uh, loss of Savage, but getting the his uh, woman in return. Uh, of course, they were married in real life, but, you know, reunited in uh, character. Can't go wrong with that. It's Even. Oh, it's Taker Kane for me. Taker Kane for I can you. watch those guys all day. Okay, so that concludes our second round. And we're going to put this up again. Take so that. we had Rock Hogan beat Piper Goldust from uh, 3-0. Angle HBK beat the Boneyard match 3-0. Owen and Brett beat Edge and Foley 3-0. And Savage and Moyer beat Taker Kane 2-1, setting up a semifinal of Rock Hogan versus Angle HBK and Owen and Brett versus Savage Warrior. Yep. So, uh, yeah, quite the combinations uh, coming out as we uh, get down to our final four. And... Start off with our first uh, semifinal, Hogan and Rock versus uh, Angle HBK. Um, how much uh, more we can add to uh, the talk with these matches, but I'm going with uh, Hogan Rock because I saw it live. It was you know, a totally different experience to uh, encounter that live than watching uh, Angle and HBK uh, from my home. So I'm going with that one. Steven? I watched them both from home, but it's Hogan Rock. It's the match of, I think it's one of the best WrestleMania matches ever. So, And Jonesy? Uh, the better wrestled match, of course, is Angle Michaels, but um, Rock and Hogan, that's what WrestleMania is all about. There we go. And so a sweep there. And this goes to Brett and Owen versus Savage Warrior. Oh, it's Owen and Brett. Battle wrestled match, better storytelling. I could watch that one all day. So I'm going Brett Owen. Um, I disagree, but um, it's hard to disagree because the Owen versus Brett match is a very great match, but the feeling between the two matches and how the crowd was reacting. I think the Savage Warrior one just is, was so much bigger and important match. And again, the fact that Warrior wasn't that great of a wrestler, um, he definitely was a fan favorite. I seen him alive many times at the London Gardens and he never disappointed. Um, but uh, for me, it's Savage and Warrior by, by, this many scepters. Okay, so I got to be the lovely tiebreaker in this one. And you got two guys I like in uh, each match and guys I don't like in each match. Uh, I'm a huge uh, Savage fan. Warrior, as a little kid, might have liked him, but knowing what he was capable of. Owen, I loved Owen, uh, especially with the Blue Blazer. Brett, Great talent, but a little full of himself. Uh, I'm going to go with Owen Brett because it was the Get out. wrestled match. 
I love I love uh, everything with uh, Savage uh, and Elizabeth getting back together, and Savage being able to carry uh, Warrior through the match. But the shock of the little brother beating the uh, big brother just and it was the first time for those guys, at least on TV. So I gotta go with them. Well, I strongly disagree with that. <laughs> That's okay. So, That's what this is about. Come is. on, Ma- Macho, Macho went to the, the – like, whenever did you see a wrestler at that time do his finisher like five times in a freaking row? The, the, the energy was off the chart in that match. I, I highly, highly contest that decision. But that's okay because it was a good match. I get it because I'm a, I'm a huge uh, savage mark. But Are you basing it off of wrestling, not that it was a bigger match? Or the better match is the uh, Owen and uh, Brett. And that's yes, hard for me to say. Wrestling, wrestling wise, perhaps. But the rest of it, forget it. Forget about it. <laughs> And so, Stephen? So we had Rock Hogan beat Angle HBK 3-0. Owen and Brett beat Savage Warrior 2-1, setting up Rock Hogan, Brett Owen. And this was my uh, finals for this side anyways. Yeah, wow. So uh, no uh, bracket breaking. Uh, your bracket was a little messed up, uh, Jonesy, so I don't know if how. That was my fault. Oh, oh no. all my fault. Uh, so I blame our, my lazy eye for that. Yeah, it happens. I, I'm not surprised that these ones are in the finals. Uh, I would have to look back in the uh, next part of the bracket to see where uh, who could possibly take out either of these matches. So we'll uh, know that in just a couple minutes. Uh, who's going to be in that? But Jonesy, you get to reveal what your vote is for Hogan Rock versus Brett Owen. Uh, Rock Hogan. Um, again, it's just I remember a few matches that I have seen. I don't have a great memory as far as I can see wrestling events, movies, and I forget like 90% of what happened like instantly. That's just my brain. But I remember a lot about this match, uh, um, not just because I was there, but because it was just well done. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Um, Owen and Brett started off the uh, show on a really high note. But everything built to Hogan and Rock, and unfortunately they should have been a closing match with the way the crowd was because it died after that for the women's uh, three-way and the Jericho uh, Triple H match. So I am voting for Hogan Rock were was it a clean sweep, Stephen? Yes. There we go. As much as I love Brett Owen, it, it, you can't compete against Rock Hogan. Yeah, uh, just all the elements uh, came together perfectly. It was a perfect storm, I guess, in uh, that regards. Uh, regardless of how the buildup was kind of poor with using the NWO and the truck driving through uh, – the ambulance and stuff like that, horrible setup, but they actually, once they got them into the building and into the ring, wow. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely saying the winner of part one is Hogan Rock. Steven, do you have the Russell list in front of you? Yes, I do. Do you want me to just read the matches or just who's yeah. in it? You can read so the matches. Well, Owens, Rollins from 36 versus Piper Adonis from 3. Styles and Shane from 33 versus Firefly, Firefly Funhouse. Austin Hart from 13 versus HBK, HBK Flair 24. Taker, Triple H 27 versus uh, Triple H versus Sting 31. Edge and Orton from 36 versus Shane and Vince from 17. Roberts and Andre from five versus uh, Diesel and Taker from 12. Uh, Triple H versus Batista from 35 versus HBK, HBK and Taker from 25. And Brian and Daniel Bryan and Triple H from 30 versus Taker and Punk from 29. 
Yeah, some some really good uh, matches that uh, stole the show uh, on that side of things. And once again, there's some people that are being listed that are appearing multiple times and between the, this list, and these are non-title matches uh, that are going to be uh, considered for our uh, Mr. WrestleMania uh, on the, what is it, the April 7th? Uh, episode of Fantasy Warfare. I'm just guessing uh, at the moment uh, what the Wednesday uh, that week of WrestleMania is going to be. Uh, but yeah, we're going to uh, look at 16 of the uh, greatest WrestleMania performers of all time on that one. But definitely tune in next week for the other half of these 32 matches that uh, were special attractions on WrestleMania cards. You guys, uh, anything you got to plug before we get out of here? Yeah, go to cwnonline.ca um, to see Sluggin uh, with Stephen O'Neill this week featuring Tyler Arrow. Um, didn't know much about him until he was put in the um, Ontario Independent March Madness we do. And a great guy. Um so yeah, it's cwnonline.ca. Look for Sluggin uh, with Stephen O'Neill this week featuring Tyler Arrow. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun doing that. So yeah, very informative uh, answers to your questions, and uh, yeah, uh, getting to know some of the personalities throughout Ontario. Uh, next week, next week I got a throwback. Ooh. Could be interesting. Someone that I know you, you both will know because it's a throwback Ontario Independent. And I, when he said yes, I was very excited because it will be a very good read. And I know it is. Tyler Arrow, I've tried to get um, past, present, future. Um, some of these guys that we haven't been able to see some that we've seen a lot of and some that we've seen a lot of when we were younger. So we're still a little active. So I'm excited. There's a lot of interesting ones coming up. Excellent. So check out cwnonline.ca for slugging with Stephen O'Neill. Jonesy, what do you got? I like to plug what he was plugging. Um, I read, I read a, a couple of them. I haven't read them all yet, but they're very well done. Uh, and interesting, if you if you like, you know, people's history. Hey, there's a lead in. If you want to listen to uh, Sean and I, we've got uh, this week in wrestling history every Thursday at noon. Excellent. Uh, so we uh, will be. And uh, one thing I have to add on, is I purposely cut you off because I'm I'm really mad. I, I want I want to ask people whether you do it through here or on on the Facebook uh, post there. Do you, do, you, do you think that we got it right, that the own heart match is a better match or a watch, I should say, not a match, but a better watch um, than uh, Warrior versus Savage at Mania 7? I mean, they're both great, but I just, I don't know. To me, that one just was, is, is bigger. Well, I, uh, d I can agree with you on the, that. We so just, ask the universe. Uh, I just want to see if the universe yeah. agrees. So what I'm going to suggest is uh, maybe later on tonight, you can uh, put up a poll on our uh, Facebook page. I, and, I have no uh, idea how to do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk you through it. But you can put up a poll and uh, find out what the uh, watchers uh, think. And we'll uh, look back at that for uh, next week's uh, show. At the same time, tomorrow, uh, fancy, sorry, tomorrow, Scumbags Wrestling Podcast uh, being bumped to nine o'clock on uh, Thursday. Normally it's eight o'clock, but I have to work a little bit later. Uh, we're going to look at the current standings of the Ontario Indie uh, March Madness uh, tournament that's going on right now on our Facebook page, and we're also going to look regrettably back at AEW's uh, Revolution uh, pay per view that happened this past week, plus any other uh, news that. Uh, comes up throughout the week. So I hope you join us. And I can't uh, wait. I'm going to listen to this now. Well, talk Jim about AEW Revolution. 
Nice. I wonder if we and him are going to have a lot of the same opinions. Yeah, hmm. we'll talk about all that Thursday at 9 o'clock, uh, so just an hour difference, and we'll see you next week on Fantasy Warfare Tournament, plus look for the poll. Have a good night. If you want a variety of wrestling news and history, look no further than the Scumbags of Wrestling family of shows. On Wednesday nights at 6 p.m., join Sean, Stephen, and Jonesy as we look for the best of the best and break it all down in a unique tournament format on Fantasy Warfare Tournament. Then, Thursdays at noon, take a look back at the rich history of our great sport with This Week in History. We live title changes, births, deaths, and some of the best events of all time. Finally, join us for the latest in wrestling news, show results, and predictions Thursday nights at 8 p.m. for the Scumbags Wrestling Podcast. The Scumbags Wrestling can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram, along with our audio versions on Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else you get your podcasts from. We're a proud part of the Ontario Indie Wrestling Podcast Network and the Johnners Podcast Network.